Hey, welcome to Nerdarchy, for Nerds by Nerds. Today, Nerdarchy gets neck romantic with the undead. Alright, so what are we going to start off with that's talking about? Maybe your thing? name. Who, who the hell are you, anyway? Oh, uh, uh, sorry, I mean zombie. I'm mindless, I'm mindless undead, uh, Ryan. Yeah. I'm Ted. Dave. Nate. And, uh, so we're going to talk about what, undead? We're talking about undead. Off what the about of our head? I think um, we're talking about them as a general class of creatures. Of not creatures. a class of classes. Not a class no, of classes. You cannot take levels then. <laughs> oh, man. Curse. Uh, so the undead can have levels and take Although, I mean, you know, um, there were certain prestige classes in third edition that let you go kind of an undead route, I believe. But mm -hmm. that aside, um, I don't know. They're, oh, they're actually, uh, was it, was it uh, I don't know which edition, was second or third, where they had the, the half undead uh, template? That was templates. third. That was definitely a third because all the templates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a racist, and I don't even think they were ECLs. You just, you know, like you, I think it, I don't think you got anything from your original race. I think, well, I don't know. Also, there was, um, eh, we're getting a little topic, but there was like that Ghost Walk, Walk campaign that was kind of like an undead oh, yeah. sort of in thing. S in second edition for Ravenloft, they had the Necropolis yeah. where you could all be undead classes, but it was more of like if you were a fighter of a certain level, you switched over to a vampire of a certain power. Right. So it was pretty cool. Okay, so anyway, undead, super versatile. You go, you got your corporeal undead, your incorporeal, um, which either means it's something you can physically touch and affect and hit um, as you would, you know, pick up this bottle. Or there's the things that can drift through walls and, um, you know, like their force effects can harm you, but sometimes not all oh, of their... Yeah, so so sometimes like you can't affect them fully, and they can't affect you. So how how can we use undead, you know, as as you know GMs, to either their fullest effect, or in new and interesting ways? Well, the the thing about undead is, as far as new and interesting ways, their their possibilities are endless because, you know, with undead, it's anything from your bruiser mindless minion to your your master to the mastermind of your entire campaign villain right well yeah they're suitable for you know first level through 30th level there, like you there's can do an something with there's it. an undead of every flavor right exactly yeah you know even some you didn't even think about so you know I, you know I think the thing with undead is 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 setting the mood and the theme where a lot of times you know, if you just chuck them at your players, you know, it's, oh, there's some zombies, there's some skeletons. It really doesn't have that it's, much It's got to have that sort of raising the hair on the back of your neck sort of feeling. So, so you want you want to use, you know, fallen party members or, you know, fallen townsfolk that the people know. Well, not only that, it's not even, like, your choice in, in what who the foe is. It's, like, the sort of, like, the italicized flavor text that you're going to use. You know, like like when you're reading a module, the stuff that you describe to the PCs, like you need the shuffling and the the clinking of the undead, the stuff like you know maybe the the scraping of of the bones across the hall along the hallway, something like yeah, that. Yeah, or skeletons pulling themselves out of the ground. Some thriller action. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the scripters really carry the mood, I think. Yeah, and also like you know, obviously in the middle of the day isn't going to be a good time for a <laughs> for, for an undead encounter. Although there's plenty of undead, it doesn't affect. But you lose that flavor, that creepy element. Right. You know, you could definitely do red herrings and make your players think it's some kind of other monster, and boom, there it is. It's actually it's one of the you know the unliving come come to uh, feast on your brains. If you if you have a you know generic zombie encounter and you, you sit back and you say, okay, you know three three zombies sh shuffle out of, out of the out of the woods, you know, towards you guys. The, 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 the PCs aren't going to quiver in fear, but if you say, you know, that, that you start describing the sounds. Yeah, you start hearing you know, bones. You give them, give them, you know, give them listen checks or perception checks to try and see if they can, you know, distinguish what's going on. They start, start describing, but, you know, the, Well, why would you shuffle. even give them the checks, though? I mean, if you want to set a mood, why give them a check that they can fail? Why not just say, hey, why not just have them hear it? Yeah. Well, you start off with a check so that they... They 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 start getting that 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 paranoia. That well, actually, so a little bit better still, I would think, is to give them that sort of sense that like you know if it's in the middle of the city or whatever, or they're like or they're on the outskirts of a town, like where you see somebody kind of stumbling toward them at first, like they think it could be a drunkard or whatever, kind of mumbling or whatever. 
and then they get closer, and you see like pieces of flesh missing off of them, like the or sort the of smell. the re- the reveal, the revealed horror. You know, like the the leading to the suspect is going to be a casual encounter, and that's the thing too. Don't make all of your encounters actually be like combat encounters. Every once in a while, you've got to put those plot, you know, those everyday encounters in there. You know, at least one per session or something. So that when you give them something where it seems like ordinary, and then you have the chance to like wrench it, twist it on them, you know, when they they start to smell like grape rot, sort of smells it, right. you know, they get but within range. What I was saying is that you know when when the zombies eventually do show up, if you just if you describe them and you know you use the rotting courses and the pieces you know falling off of them and you know whatever 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 description you like. But never actually give the name. You might actually get your players psyched out a little bit. Never use the Z word. Yeah. You know, it might not be what they expect. They might they might be a little bit more afraid because you're not using that you know, monster name. Well, I think that's a big problem in the game, especially when you've been doing it a long time. It's really easy to get lazy and just go, "Oh, you see three zombies shambling towards you," yeah. which yeah, you know, no one. Uh, oh, oh my god, it's zombies, not that. And, you know, you're scaring me so much for a fifth level party. Or, you know, or, or whatever the case may be. You know, a lot, of, a lot of making an effective encounter is all about the ambience. And when you're talking about the undead, it really is about trying to creep out your players before the actual encounter happens, you know. Psychological Descri- warfare. Yeah, exactly. You know, or even, you know, a lot of the same stuff would apply to, like, Cthulhu-type monsters as well. Where, you know, you, you want to do the full moon. You want to do... You know, you know the the uh, a foggy night, or you know, or maybe you know, or maybe you know, inclement weather that obscures your vision as it is, and, and just really kind of set that mood where you're you're kind of like trying to imply to the players that their characters are feeling kind of miserable already. You just want, to you get want them on the, edge. A you little. want them on on eggshells, like you know, yeah. ready to turn tail at a moment's notice. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like it's hard to always be doing that, like to always set the mood for an encounter, because sometimes it's like if you run running four, five, six encounters a night, like, sometimes it's hard. I would almost say, like, if you can strive as a GM to, like, have one or two encounters a night that you really set the stage for, and then some of them are just going to, you're well, going to kind of just It's, it's going to depend upon the flavor of well, your campaign. Well, your campaign, but also to the energy level of the table. It just, well, like, it ebbs and flows. Like, you know, yeah, I definitely, like, I, I felt that last session I ran, like, you know, I could have up tension here and there, yeah. Well, yeah, it, we here's, the other, here's the other thing about that. Like, you can't do that every time yeah. or it'll take away from it anyway. Well, no, it makes it more impactful when you do it. Like that kind Yeah, of so, you know, it's it's all about the off, the off-camera stuff that really works best for horror. And when you're talking undead, I mean, you know, that's what I would go to, all the horror tropes, but not the Splatterhouse, Freddy Krueger, Jason stuff, but, you know, stuff that's a little more subtle. You know, Poe or, uh, you know, Lovecraft. You know, that kind of stuff <coughs> where, where, you know, you, you're, you're trying to play on the characters or, or players' emotions a little bit. So so when they do encounter that in Undead, whether it's a lowly zombie or the vampire, you know, and that's another thing, right? So we're talking on the uh, dead, Undead and we're talking encounters, right? It doesn't have to be a combat encounter. Intelligent Undead will talk and, and, and actually interact with the players. They may encounter them several times before the combat actually takes place. They may first encounter them and not even know they're encountering undead. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you could totally build it up where, like, it's it's a lord or noble, and they, they're digging on them, they're liking them. Like, this guy's kind of cool. He added us over for dinner. You know, he paid us to do some jobs. You know, and then slowly, like, some inconsistencies start to come out in the game. Hey, furthering that even still... He could have them like retrieve things for him that he's using for nefarious purposes that the party doesn't realize they're just doing the job. Or better yet, what if he's at war with another undead lord? Yeah. You know, and he's using them to, to further that and you know, like they've already got in their mind that the enemy is undead, that's the villain, and they've been you know, they've been encountering and skirmishing you know, the forces of this Lich King or whatever, and the goodly noble has been directing them and helping them out all along. Well, it turns out he's twice as bad as the Lich. Right, right. Uh, you know? Or, yeah, you, yeah, the whatever. You, you have a you know, possible encounter in front of the mirror that the guy doesn't have a reflection. And now all of a sudden, hey, wait a second. You know, there's only one thing that I'm aware of in the D&D myth is it doesn't have a reflection. Uh, I mean, that's kind of like on Deadlord, but I mean, that's pretty heavy-handed, like an obvious... Yeah, I, I would think... 
a vampire isn't going to have mirrors in his in his uh, abode. They got they got to go. <laughs> or, the, or yeah, like the, maybe they noticed that like uh, he was like bluffing, taking a sip of anything. Like he doesn't actually ever drink or whatever. Because I don't know. Can do vampires taste things? Uh, that, uh, yeah, well, I'm sure they could fake it. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, that's the thing. Like, uh, yeah, like they might with a strong perception and check versus blood. I don't know, maybe they're like a cheerleader yeah. after the meal. They have to go throw it up or something. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they, they, but they, they choke it down for you know the, the, to save the, uh, the, the false pretense. Now, with what you were saying earlier, with those two, that story between those two uh, nemesis, you have this, you have this fight going on. Well, that's got a story in the background. I like the undead that have, you know, like the Burning Man, the guy that was tormented, wrongly accused, and then burned at the stake. So not the, like the, the festival in the middle of the... No, not the no. festival. No. But, the, you know, the Burning Man. So in the woods, maybe like, there's a forest fire or something, or someone is found burned to death in their house, but nothing else is burned. So it's like all these weird mystery kind well, of things. Well, I mean, you can... When you th- even deconstruct, like, the... Um, like the Freddy Krueger mythos, like the guy that was like, you know, Freddy Krueger was a, a pedophile that was like killed or burned or whatever, and and he came back and started wreaking vengeance. You could totally lift that plot, you know, and set that in a hamlet or a village. Well, and that's true. Like even if you look at that story, yeah. like th- you know, even though it, it's kind of it's eighties cheesy, you know, well, you can fantasy it up, and, and, and it's got that splatter house to it. But if you even look at that mythos in the story, you know, his mom was some kind of like, uh, yeah, we, we actually got captured by inmates and basically raped for years or whatever, and he was conceived and raped. Like so, like there's all this hard oh, stuff that went that into story that's really creating Freddy Krueger, yeah. you know, and you know if you put any kind of detail like that into them dead in your world, it, you know. It, it's going. You could build a whole plot line off that. Right. You could start your characters literally at level one and take them to level twenty, with just this whole, undead. J- just this one whole story arc. Yeah. You know, and it wouldn't just be facing undead, but you know, the servants undead. And you, know, you go back to the vampire and the lich, right? Maybe the lich actually isn't even evil. You know, but you know, but like with one the of those Baylor, ba- Bellinors or whatever they're called. Yeah, I don't remember what they're called. Yeah, the lawful good liches. Yeah, the lawful good liches. But you know, but you know, the vampire has actually got the proof and the evidence that it's undead, and it, you know, and even maybe that it's a lich, and so like they. That's all the party needs. You take their assumptions and use it against them. Yeah. So next thing you know, like they're this campaign long uh, quest and how to bring down the van- uh, the the lich, you know. Attacking his his forces and his minions, and then now they want to find his fat factory so they can destroy it, you know. And it all turns out that they're really they're working for the bad guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. who you know who well, they thought was the good guy. Those type of quests, when when you you finally get that that twist or turn, you know, high high level, it, it's 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 really a, you know a game changer, you know. And it, it's I think it's a lot of a lot of fun. To go through that kind of campaign and have to really make those hard choices, you know, to figure out all right which is which and what 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 do you do from this point in time. So and you know and that's just one possible angle. I mean, there's a plethora. There's so much you can do. There's so there's so many different undead. I've always loved the white. You know, it, it's always been like a cool monster because you know having the players find the the hidden burial chamber and they're like woohoo payday. But then all of a sudden, you know, you have the whites bursting out of it. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean they're great. Um, Undead in general are great to set up any sort of like dungeon sort of delve type of thing because like crypts and stuff like that. Like it's cool because you don't ever have to think about like ecology. Why are they there? Like, what are they eating? Yeah, they uh, they're just they're, hanging around they're, waiting they're, for something. They're, they're yeah. just waiting for something to just to destroy. You know, like you can put in your 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 carrion crawlers, your vermin, that your bats, whatever. Um, but by and large, like you don't really have to hold to a certain logic. They can kind of just be chilling inside of the traps or in tombs, and like they're just there. They're good way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's, well, especially the unintelligent undead because they don't have to worry about being bored. You know, like whereas like an intelligent undead, they want to kind of do stuff. Yeah. But you got the undead who have the, have the ability to to level drain or stat drain, and you know, that's a that's a good way to deal with, you know characters who are overpowered or you know are, are specifically trying to power a game or to just put out a further complication for players to have something to overcome yeah well I mean and also too it's like they're a decent resource drain um, like it makes so such that you don't have to make like the ultimate big bad encounter 
be all that ridiculous if you give them a lot of like resource training encounters uh-huh. with like undead that are going to do a stat train or whatever. Right. You know, like it, it sort of ups the stakes and and makes the you know you don't have to. It doesn't have to be this huge epic thing to finish it out. Although that's cool too. Um, you can you can like scale back the power level. Right. Encounter well, in you know, regard. What do you want to say? I wanted to say about uh, Ted's example. Uh, you were talking about. What were you talking level about? Drain stuff. Level draining stuff. Level draining stuff. Thanks. It's a little late tonight. Uh, so with the level draining things, it, let's say they don't have a cleric of sufficient level to restore them. Well, that Ooh. can be a side quest all on its own. You got to go to the village. Well, you guys are kind of strapped for cash, so you know the cleric doesn't want a magic sword. He wants money, <laughs> or he wants some task completed. Maybe you have to go do something for him. So that's a whole other side quest just to get back up to peak peak performance for the characters. Indeed. Well, there's, there's a lot of back and forth that can be played with that type of uh, effect. And at the same time, you get to, you know, build, uh, build a rapport with, with an NPC. I think too. Another thing is, uh, undead can tie the players to your world like no other monster. And here's what I mean by that: all undead have a story, mm-hmm. for the most part. Even the lowliest of undead has a reason why it's undead. So, like, if you go back to the the burial chamber where maybe it's a white and some skeletons and some zombies or some ghouls and some gas, well. You know, there's probably a story as to why he became a white. You know, and that story is going to be tied to your world. That 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 monster, even though it's kind of a generic monster, well, let you say about history. It's yeah. a yeah, it's yeah, a unique crazy. character. You know, so after they defeat the monsters in the burial chamber, they may find like the story of this guy's life, and then they might find out why he became a white and right. and how he connected to the world around them, and and maybe even he has ties to the players or ties to their homeland. Let you hint at like magic items that this person may have lost or whatever you know like you you find scrolls or tomes it's, or like you know, things that kind of just you know it's seeds for your campaign it's seeds yeah, for the can, yeah. for the players to tie into that world <clears throat> even yeah. if it was just part of some kind of crazy epic battle a thousand years ago or a hundred years ago just kind of that that like you said the tie-in really helps flesh out and make your campaign more real like adds color to it well, you guys got anything else? What else you want to talk about? Well, you can get into other uh, fun middling. Well, actually, so uh, another cool thing about the undead is the fact that it doesn't really matter if it's on land or on sea. You can have aquatic, you know, skeletons or zombies. Land, air, or sea. You land, air, or sea. Well, air is a little iffy, but you, there's some things. There are, you know, there's things that fly. But I'm just talking like you can do skeletons in water without really worrying about anything. Zombies. Uh, the, the ghoul is pretty awesome, and there's totally an aquatic version of them, um, so they can get around. Um, you can have sunken like pirate ships or whatever, and the whole story of that going on. So, you know, they at, they're they're at home in any environment too. So that's kind well, of well, yeah. I mean, like there's certain environments where you you have to really kind of reach to find uh, appropriate monsters things. and challenges for your players because you kind of have to explain why you know certain monsters are in a tundra or in a desert where things or it's a lot harder for things to survive but not with undead you know they can be found anywhere where people would have gone well i mean it, it basically it gets back to the thing like and whenever you put it undead there like you can always imply a story like you know of why were why were they here and how did they become come to be what they are? Yeah, yeah. Why why was this group of undead in the center of a swamp with nothing around it? Right, right. Y- you know, because they were before they were undead. There were people. What were those people doing? Right, exactly. And, you know, and you could also use undead, you know, with with, uh, with you know tactfully. And you know, your campaign last week was a, was a perfect example. You know, I don't know what the name of the the, the skeletons that were on fire were, but when you killed them, they exploded. And you know, the first time we realized that, it's like, well, ho- holy crap! What are we gonna do with with skeletons that are gonna cocktails, mm- essentially? Yeah. Uh, and it was just so happens that you know you place the encounter on you know, uh, you know on, on a ledge that so we could just push them off. But if, if we wouldn't have thought of that, it, it could have dwindled our well, resources. The ex- them exploding right next to you, yeah, it would have been a bad. Well, it would have sucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> we would have had a bad time. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, uh, well, what else can we say? Well, I mean, they're cool because, you know, the intelligent undead, like, you can give them levels, you know, like... So let's look at the bullet points. Yeah. Um, you know, intelligence, zero to s- genius. Yeah. Um, corporal, incorporal. You can find them anywheres. 
Well, and they can be just about any class, depending. Like, you could have... A, I think I've thrown a vampire monk at you guys before, but, like... So you can give them, you know, like, like the, the vampire can be anything from a fighter to a spellcaster. I mean, Lich is a little specific, like, it's, it's generally going to be a cleric or a wizard, mm -hmm. you know, but, like, you know, a lot of other template undead, you can you can give them just about any, you know, any But if you, take, if, if you take that Lich and you want to give him spells that are geared towards battle and give him levels of fighter... There's nothing stopping you. Oh yeah, no. You no, know, no. I think a lich paladin might be a bit of a, a stretch, but uh, you we know. call that a death knight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, death knight. Yeah, yeah. Oh, speaking of the class and uh, the death knight, uh, we're forgetting the the one of the ways that you have a dead around is through necromantic powers. So you've got the whole aspect of having living, breathing. Uh, a caster that's behind doing yeah, a caster things. behind the scenes, and I mean he could he can just blend into a city. You know he could be the mayor, he could be the guy crazy. Herman he could the be woods. the senator Palpatine. Yes, you know, he could <laughs> be the dark Sith. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just kind of yeah, doing things. So you know that's another. Yeah. He could be the herbalist or alchemist or really anybody anybody around town. And uh, if he's good at hiding himself. If he wants to be all creepy hermit in the woods with his <laughs> bones dangling off him, well, then, that too. then it then it, it gives you like the perfect red herring. Yeah, you maybe have, that guy's you, not even. You the have like you have the herbalist guy, but then you have the guy who actually isn't the the necromancer, but he's a very Vincent Price esque. <laughs> Welcome to my estate, uh, you know. But he's just eccentric. Right. But he's just a weird guy. Yeah, he's just a weirdo. And but the PCs are convinced that this guy is the necromancer. And, and you know that that could be all done in planning and. And the undead that's behind it is aware and using this guy as a stooge to be like, all right, well, I can just point them that way and I'll be in the clear. Right. There's yeah. no way Scooby Doo can possibly not stumble upon on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. So, yeah, so that's another bullet point, really, is the fact that, you know, the force, the driving force behind the undead doesn't actually have to be undead. Yeah. You know, which, uh, which is nice because what it does is. It, it shores up the weaknesses of the undead by having your your mastermind not have those weaknesses and having other strengths. So you can kind of mix and match to uh, you know create a greater threat in the campaign itself mm. and a bigger story. And and vice versa to that, if you've got an intelligent undead, there's nothing stopping him from having non undead you know mercenaries and servants. Right, like the the sort of the Renfield accomplice, right. you know, right. the Dracula thing. Well, yeah, yeah. Every good vampire has at least one thrall. <laughs> right. One guy is just like, yeah. During the daylight, you're gonna carry around my body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's you're that's gonna stand. You're do. gonna stand by my coffin. Or he may be a noble that has the you know the best superpower, money. Yeah. And yeah. he may have hired the adventurers or hire another mercenary party. Yeah. Uh, that you may have to fight. Who aren't interested in, uh, you know, oh, good versus evil or anything the like that. Altruistic means. They're interested in the stack of dollar bills, you know. Yeah. You know, all about the platinum and the electric. Yeah, a discussion of uh, undead wouldn't be complete without at least mentioning Ravenloft once. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mentioned oh. it earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 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 like the the go to. And I mean, you know, if you want a heavy dose of this sort of theatrical um, gothic horror. Um, it's definitely, you know, you, you may as well be heavily influenced by it, you know. Otherwise, if, you, if you're just splashing it into, like, a, a couple of sessions, like, you, you know, you don't have to... Well, there's another reason for mentioning yeah. Ravenloft. Ravenloft has a lot of notable... All undead. badass undead, yeah. You got Strahd. Yeah. You had Lord Soth. Soth. Yeah, for right. a while. That's right. You had Aslan. Aslan. I was trying to remember his name, yeah. yeah. You know, you, th that trifecta alone... And, you know, all of which were great books. I think there was a, there was like a mummy one too, but I can't remember. Yeah, I'm not familiar with. I'm not familiar. With, there's actually a bunch of other dark lords, yeah. and they have great, terrible artifacts. Uh, like lots of cursed items. Just lots of cursed around, items, yeah. and they all have great stories behind them. Uh, so that was one of the interesting things about it. Is pretty much whenever you got a uh, there's like a page write up for an artifact. There's a page write up for just a magic item that's kind of creepy. Yeah, you know, like and. Um, so a cool thing about Ravenloft is it kind of feels like, um, like classic monster movies meets like you know fantasy kind of right. thing. You know, like you're 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 the werewolf, the Frankenstein, bride of Frankenstein. Like it's kind of like somewhere between that feel and, and fantasy, and then like you with that poet well, influence as well. Y you know, the thing with those kind of those movies was they didn't have the technology 
in order to do the stuff that they do now. So they had to be smarter. Suspense. It was more about yeah, the they suspense. Had, you know, they had to build a better uh, movie because they couldn't build a better monster. Right, yeah. You know, but, and uh, you know, personally, that's the kind of horror I prefer. You know, I prefer that off-screen stuff where you have where your imagination's going and, and you don't know what really happened, but you kind of have an idea. Yeah. And even if you're not going to the, like the classic monster movies, like a great uh, movie to look at for that kind of um, sort of like just getting glimpses of the, of the monster, uh, but it's more about the suspense, is like um, John Carpenter's The Thing, or uh, or the first Alien movie, like yeah. the first Alien movie, because. The aliens kind of looked ridiculous as far as the prosthesis, so they showed them sparingly. And, right. You know, like, that was kind of the same thing. We're, like, not showing the monster. Less is more. And, yeah. and, and with those type of effects, you, you as you said, with making them smarter, you, you have it showing less so that it is more suspenseful. And if you do that with your, your, your monsters in, in a game where it's, like, prowling in the shadows and the, it's lurking... The players don't know exactly where it is or what direction it's going to be coming from. That 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 adds the the higher suspense. And, and it's like the power gamer's kryptonite. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. as soon as you show a monster, your power gamers are, who have memorized every monster <laughs> in the book, yeah. all of a sudden you know they're like, oh, we need garlic and s- silver-tipped arrows that have been blessed by a priest. <laughs> it so happens that I have one of those in my backpack. Yeah, it's just like well. You know what you've seen, buddy, was like a silhouette from like a pale silhouette from like 400 feet away. Good luck trying to identify what right. the heck that was. Y- y- yeah, or you know, or the villager that got drug away and all they find is like the blood smear. Yeah, yeah when you're trying to create that shoot. suspense, you want to create more questions than than conclusions. Yeah. I think. In the, in yes, the beginning. but you don't. Yeah, you don't want to. And I, I struggle with this, like with like you know having PCs at the tables. Like you don't want it to the confrontation to happen right away you want to tease it out for a while you know like and the thing too to remember with most undead you know especially your bad guy your big bads is they're usually tragic mm-hmm. like you know they're not they're they're rarely a hundred percent uh you know the 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 smiling maniac evil bad guy you know usually there's a path that led them to where they are yeah. they may end up that way and they may have done some horrendous things but it's not simple. It's not black and white. Yeah, I would say some more so than others. Like vampires, absolutely. You know, you could be an accidental vampire or have some tr- horrible, unfortunate set of circumstances. I'd say with the lich, they actively saw that for yeah, a span that, of time. The lich is like I think like the penultimate evil. Like you can still have way interesting things have have happened in their past. But becoming a lich is a, a whole. Process. It is, but like you know, what drives someone to do that? What is it they're after? Like there, there's, there's always something deeper. You know, it sure it can be. I just want more power, or you know, did they feel like they had to live longer because there was a problem they needed to solve? You know, is you know, there's so many different directions you can yeah. go in. Now, now the ghost is also we didn't really get into. The, actually, we didn't dwell on the incorporeal all that much. Oh, yeah, but the ghost is yeah. I, but and the ghosts are super interesting in that regard. As that, you know, like it's usually some terrible turn of events. Like they haunt an area because something tragic has happened, and they they can't they can't rest. You know, they they have to like basically it's just their maddened spirit wandering around until they're laid to rest. Kind of. And if you have that at a lower level where the party can't actually physically affect it, you know, they don't have magic swords and they don't have all this kind of other stuff that you need to hit a ghost reliably. You can kind of have it to where they'd have to solve the issue that the, the riddle, ghost is th- yeah, yeah, some kind of you gotta have it like they're trying to get the ghost to leave through whatever riddle or problem solving thing that you want to have for the for the people. And that that's always good as a you know either, either something as part of the the quest that you're working on or something to to be thrown in as a random encounter. Well, and yeah, I, I actually an interesting arc you could take low like starting from low level because level one through three like you really have nothing to, to <laughs> offer fighting a ghost um maybe as a side as a little aside thing um to the main quest they just hear about this person that's gone missing some terrible thing they, they, they can't find a little girl or whatever and then like you know some months weeks or months later in campaign time then they hear about this terrible you know, spirit that's haunting this area, and then through investigation, they come to realize it's the spirit of this child, and yeah, you know, like kind of going through the whole thing. But it gives you a chance of like 
it just there's the passage of time and you know like they 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 kind of have a history with this thing because it was sprinkled in earlier like i don't know like i feel like always as a player it's more meaningful when in like the seed is bit planted like right. way 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 back mm-hmm. um yeah so it would just be something interesting and then they'd be roughly an appropriate level to handle it um yeah as, as the campaign progresses right so you know ghosts in uh, in second edition were a little bit different than they are nowadays Back in the it, old days. Back in the old days. And if you're a half orc or a human, it really sucked to encounter ghosts. Because just seeing a ghost aged you like 10 years. Wow. And then every time they touched you, they aged you. <laughs> where, you know. No, where, it was just stat drain. Yeah, yeah and, uh, you know. Con, who, right? Or charisma. Stat, Is it charisma? Stat drain and, 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 and damage effects where when you had to age thing, Yeah, for a dwarf or, a, or an elf, it's not as a big deal. But, yeah. you know, if you. If, if, any other race. It was kind of an issue, and, and you know, there was also the aging charts. So like, yeah, which really sucked because you would physically get the penalties, but you wouldn't get the benefits. Right. Well, I mean, th- even um, uh, third edition and Pathfinder have the you know the chart where you know you, your your strength, dex, and con, your physical sets do decline. I don't know if you'd get the benefits. I think that would be kind of a house rule, and I'd probably rule again. Yeah, you know, like so no, you, you don't get the benefits because you, you haven't experienced. Yeah, it. you yeah, haven't like, aged. You didn't yeah. gain the wisdom. Yeah, no. So, so that you was something uh, early on that they did in in, in AD and D was kind of like messed up with the ghosts. Yeah, and well, level drain worked a lot different back then too. It really sucked. Bad. Oh man, it was really terrible. Yeah. <laughs> like it was. <laughs> now it's like you know, there's there's like saving throws and stuff. Before is now nah, you just lost levels. <laughs> you just lost levels. Say goodbye. You're you're done. With the ghost, I was thinking of just like a simple campaign thing. You can use it. Uh, one of the ways I like to use monsters is you use a kind of an overpowered monster for the party. But what you do is you don't, it's not just I'm going to spam attack you until you're either dead or you kill me. It's this idea that maybe the ghost is messed up. I mean, it was messed up enough to stay here when it, when it died. So you figure something's either binding it or someone has bound it to a place or maybe their gravesite's disturbed or whatever. So you could have something where, let's say you're you're exploring a mine. There's like people going missing around the area, and you fall down. You the party falls into a pit trap or falls into a mine shaft, and then you're stuck in this place because you can't find the exit. And there's there's ghosts of miners that were in a collapse. Maybe you have to either uh, do something where you have to like kind of like the the ghost might not attack you, or maybe if you do a particular thing, you have to figure out what the ghosts do not like. You know, it's kind of like concept where they're not just there to kill you. You have to get them to, to, to hold true to their oath that they let uh, long, <laughs> long ago, and then they'll go attack the sea pirates. Well, I was thinking more along yeah. the lines of perhaps if you destro- burn their at- bones or you put holy water on or their bones, or, or, or even if you get burial, them, proper burial, even if you ritual. unbury them. But if you and touch them, their favorite mining pick, all bets it's, are it's off. Totally That's a good possibility. Yeah. That, that, that would be a trigger for them murdering your face <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the rest of you. Yeah. That's right. Murdering your face. That's right. Yeah, it's always bad to get your face murdered by ghosts. It's true. It's true. So I, we're going to keep this a little brief. This is just we're just we just really want to do just a generic overview of undead and the possibilities and you know they're just fun, fun, fun for the DM to play with. It's true. Fun for the whole party, except for when you're getting and aged course, and level you know. drained. So similar to as we did with uh, Demons and Devils, Undead you really can have as an adversary for any level for a party. Yeah, there, there's, there is no level limit or minimum for, for facing the creatures from the beyond, I would say. And, you know, and it, but then again, too, like, you know, as a side note, like we said, we mentioned it, but it doesn't have to be a combat encounter. Right. I mean, if it's a zombie or a skeleton, yeah, pretty much that's all you have to do. Well, maybe this one's different, but right. for the most part, you know, an intelligent, intelligent creatures, even undead, can interact with you. And you know, hey, one of them might be just the patron to your players. Or you know, it could, it could be an adversary that you know the, the players have, and the the enemy knows that the players are coming after him. But if he keeps appearing in a way that the party can't quite get to him, and you know, yeah, they might try and use missiles or whatever, but you know. Undead tend to have a lot of you know tricks up their sleeve, so the vampire misses and goes away, you know, time and time again, and all he's doing is needling at their psyche, not casting spells, not not doing any kind of attacks, but just showing up and making comments, making you know little little needles. 
letting them, letting them know that you know I'm here. I can be here whenever I want to be. That's right. You There's can't do a damn do thing about, about it. it. That's right. Yeah. And laughing maniacally, kind of, of like course. that. Kind yeah, of like gotta that. Gotta laugh maniacally. Yeah. It's just no fun. Yeah. So with that, let's wrap it up. All right. Yeah. Let's wrap so it up. Uh, you can uh, like a mummy. Find us on uh, on Facebook. You can uh, check us out. We're pretty much all over social media. That's yeah, right. Just type in Nerdarchy to your search. And even yeah. at uh, Nerdarchy.com. That's right. Facebook so until next time, my friends, right. stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.